Today we are making a eucalyptus honey braggot. Let's get started. Before this video begins, I wanna say this is not a final recipe. This is a experimental mead. I cannot validate that this recipe is solid for everybody. I've only done it once. I didn't practice modern beer techniques. I didn't use hops in the boil or some standard things. My friend doing the most has some very quality braggot recipes I'll point you to, but I do hope you enjoy the journey that is this recipe. All right, so what is a braggot? A braggot is a hybrid between a mead and a beer. So the best of both worlds. Um, and it is pretty easy to make. Now, some braggots, most braggots, probably have hops in them. This recipe didn't start with hops in it, but I eventually added some to it. I think it would have benefited from even more, so I'm gonna adjust that in the recipe. We are using malt extract. Now, specifically, I'm using this liquid dark malt extract, as well as eucalyptus honey. Those are my two sort of braggot combinations there. So I took this recipe on screen and decided to go ahead and throw it all together. So first of all, we had to take our malt and boil it and heat it up and mix it all well. So that's what I did. I didn't take any video of that, sorry. Mixed it up. We then added that to a bucket and added the rest of our ingredients, our honey, the rest of the water that we needed. And then because I used cold water, it was brought down to a temperature where I could pitch the yeast. And so I pitched my yeast. The starting gravity and everything is on screen, as you can see, and it should be fermenting pretty quick. We are using an ale yeast because I wanted to kind of still uh, be close to the beer realm with that. So we're using the Saf Ale US06. Um, I think it's going to be pretty good. Uh, it should ferment efficiently. We are adding some Fermade O on top of that. Um, I'm going to put it all in the primary because I'm kind of lazy right now, to be honest. And we're going to let it go. So let's let this go ahead and start fermenting and we'll come back after the primary. All right, it's been about three weeks and this is done fermenting. I'm moving it into a new bucket and then back into the original container. I'm also going to stabilize it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite to halt any future fermentation. Our new gravity is 1.014. This is because beers don't go dry normally. About 36 hours later, I am adding one pound of honey back to it and putting it to the keg so I can go ahead and force carb. I'm not gonna bottle carb. Let's see what it tastes like. All right, and here we are for the finale, the tasting. I had to do some stuff to this one. Let's go get a pour of it. All right, I have it right here in front of me. It's a nice, dark, not very clear brew. Um, I think it's just so dark you can't really see. It's got a nice stream of bubbles coming from the bottom because I force carb this thing, which means I put it into a keg and then put it at about 30 PSI for about three days and that carbonated it. Now um, let's talk about some things that happened after. So I tasted it after I'd carbonated and what I learned is it was way too malty, meaning it was like, like, I use probably 50% more malt in this recipe than I should have because it was overly malty to the point that the honey character was lost to what a lot of the honey character was lost in the brew. So I was like, how can I fix this? How can I balance this brew? Well, what I did was I had an orange blossom traditional mead that um, I was using for a different thing it's somewhere up there and uh, I had about a gallon of it left. I took that gallon and I put in some evergreen hops, which are notably extra citrusy and bright and would add some contrasting floral side. Also kind of bringing back the beer side to this because I honestly took away a lot of the beer side without adding hops. I kind of regret that. And um, I put one ounce of hops in one gallon of mead I'll let that set for about 36, 48 hours. I then racked off of those hops, so I dry hopped it essentially, into the keg that had already been pressure carved. Um, so I racked that in there, and then I purged the tank of oxygen that was 
left over. And from there, I rolled it around with a nice CO2 blanket on there and allowed everything to get mixed up and we fixed our problem. So here's what we have. We've got a way more balanced brew. The honey character now mixed with orange blossom a little bit is, um, is brought back. There's a floral side to this. There's still a malty character, I will note. And the, the hops that we added weren't necessarily enough to drastically change the recipe. In fact, I wouldn't say that I taste much hop. I do get more of a brightness that contrasts the darkness from the malt we used. It's got a, a nice level of carbonation. Um, I did have to do some more pressure carving after putting orange blossom in to recarbonate the volume that I added, which is kind of weird. But it, I mean, it's smooth. Ooh, the hops actually are presenting more at the end of the profile. That's pretty good. This mead almost was a failure. And I, uh, I think it is completely because in my recipe that I made, I added way too much malt, liquid malt. So if I were adjusting this recipe, I would, I'm gonna put it up here, my adjusted recipe, with the adaptations, um, well actually, with some adaptations. I would use half the amount of malt, liquid malt that I did. I actually would probably put some hops in this, uh, whether, whether it be dry hopping and or actually in a boiling phase, I probably would dry hop this honestly, because I feel like I can have a little more control dry hopping sometimes. And then I would probably also lean on a little more honey. Uh, actually, mm, no, I think I would keep the same amount of honey. It just needed help. So here's, here's what's important in this moment. This brew is an example of um, fixing your problems. So previously it was so malty and so in your face and I could have just given up and tossed it. But instead I said, what can I do to fix it? And it just so happened to be, I had a traditional mead and I blended it with some hops and really fix this thing. So is this a tried and true recipe? No, it's not. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now. This is just a interesting kind. I have lost a little eucalyptus honey character. However, I still get honey floral side. The good news is I have a eucalyptus blossom traditional mead in the works. So I will be able to compare this to my traditional mead to find the similar notes from each. It's refreshing, it's smooth, the ABV is not too high. I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of this. And uh, I think you should try to make something in the Braggot family as part of your challenge because Braggots are really fun. And uh, one thing I love about this one uh, after I was very nervous to share it with friends. So I fixed, fixed it. I'm going to put air quotes around that. I fixed it. And I had some, uh, some of my friends over the other night and this was the party hit of all of my meads and all of my beers I have out there in my kegerator, in my keezer. This is the one that kept going back to, and that was very affirming for me. So I enjoy it quite a bit. I hope that you will watch some more man-made mead videos. Um, I have that traditional mead video coming out at some point. I've also got a million other videos on the channel. You can of course just find them there. Please hit subscribe if you'd like to, and I hope to see you in a future video. Cheers.